Well, welcome back to the latest episode of Being to Bushcraft. You can see this week I'm back up at the bushcraft shelter that we had built um, almost a year ago now. I haven't actually been here at all over the summer and it's we've had heavy rain fall over the last 48 hours or so. So I'll take you a walk around the camp and show you <coughs> a wee bit of water damage that's happened since we've last been up here and show you what it is that we're going to be doing while we're up here. Uh, I'm currently stood inside the the dining area that we built where I've got the bench here. Um, a lot of this is going to get dismantled and we're going to use the materials to build up another section of the shelter at the rear of me. Um, the only thing that will remain will be the roof of the shelter, the sides, the bench that you can see the boys dismantling there in the background. All that wood is going to get taken away and used as building materials for around the back of the shelter which I'll take you around and show you in a minute. Um, apart from that, we've only got a couple hours of daylight left, it's already gone 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We're now in autumn here in Scotland so it gets dark around 5pm in the afternoon but because we're in a dense forest that's more likely to be closer to 4pm so we may only have an hour or two of daylight left so we'll get cracking but before I get cracking on I'll take you around and show you what it is that we're planning to do with these uh, materials so you can see there that's the material that we were taking from inside the, that dining shelter that we had built and what we're going to do is just use that to build up the walls at the back of the shelter and also the roof so that it will be the same as the back of the shelters here. In fact, that there isn't a very good example. Um, there, so it'll, more, it'll look more like that. You see, this here actually needs, still needs a side belt on it, this one here. So, yeah. So, all that remain of that part of the shelter there is the roof, which you see, it is actually needing a wee bit of work done up the top there. So, what I'll do is I'll bring these guys back later once, uh, once we've got a bit of work done. So, I was uh, telling you about the amount of rainfall that we had over the last couple of days. You can just see how much water is collected in that. And to be honest with you, I'm quite impressed actually that they, that the shelter hasn't collapsed and the amount of weight that must be in that. So, yeah, it just goes to show that there's some wood needing put in there to strengthen up that corner to prevent it from collecting in there. But you can see the amount of sunlight that actually shines through the tarp there. So once the um, the back walls are built <laughs> built up, that will really darken this area out. So you can see there, where we'd actually tied the paracord around the tree here, it's actually caused the tree a bit of damage, which I'm not entirely happy about. It's caused the tree to bleed out this sap here, but that sap is highly resinous. So what I might do is, could scrape some of that off and use that for the fire lighting later on. Since I removed the paracord there, you can see that it was actually creating a seal and it's... The tree's really... badly damaged. Something to maybe bear in mind when we're building shelters in the future is the damage that a bit of paracord can do to a tree. I'm not sure if that's enough to kill the tree, but it's certainly not good for it.
a tough one. Let's see if I can get it this time. Perfect, so today Perfect. we've got the, the, the camp apprentice out with us earlier on you see them batting in wood and now he's going to have a little shot using the big axe to chop a bit here so before you do anything with the axe we have a chopping block here so we're just taking off where we left off there um, Brian was around the back of the shelter using the chainsaw there so we cut that bit short Right here again. So chopping block, and that there's a wee bit of wood that he's going to cut, going to chop even. So where do you think you should place that bit that you're going to chop? Where do you think you should place it on the block? That's right, at the furthest point away from him. So you can see where he's standing. You can see where he's placed it there. He's placed it at the furthest point away from him. And the reason he he'll do that is. I'll just show you now. So see in my hands the axe here. If he misses that, it's going to strike either side or here. If you were to have placed that here and he missed, it could land either side or the axe could have fell short and it could have came round and hit him in the leg. So you always place it at the furthest point away. So just before he chops it, we're going to talk about his body position, his hand position, so with his hands, he's right handed, so he's going to put his right hand at the bottom of the axe and his left hand where he feels comfortable that he's going to get more control over it. If he were to have placed his left hand down at the bottom, yeah he's going to get more power in the swing but he's got less control over the axe, so he's going to place his hand further up towards the axe head. His feet are going to be apart. So you can see, looking straight on, the axe, if he were to miss swing, the axe would have further to travel to reach his back leg. Switch your feet around for me just now. So you can see if he were to miss swing there, what's going to happen? He's going to hit that leg at the front. So he has his feet the other way around, safe as we possible. So his hands are in the correct position, his feet are in the correct position. The piece of wood he's going to chop is in the correct position. When you go, take your time. You can see he struck it there, but not enough power. And there you have it. Easy as that. Safe. Safely done. You stand wherever you want. Ah. Come on then, let's see light this fire. Whatever you want. Just throw some sparks on that. Get in close to it. Closer. Right here? Yes, sir. Put the, the rod on the wood. Okay. Get in the fire pit okay. if, you know, if you need to. Perfect. Get right in there. Epic safety. There you go. Right, now get your wee sticks through there. And start laying them on top. Like just put them on. Yeah, carefully though. Mind and your fingers. Or? Any way you want. Just watch your fingers. Yeah, it's hot. Just build it up round about it. It's 
So tonight's dinner is a uh, mince and tatties. Nice. Brian's on the tatty peeling. Bench pan bashing. We've always got the fire going. We are going to uh, boil up some water. Get all the dishes washed because they're all gunky and that for the last time we were up here. And uh, start making dinner after that. Suits it, didn't he? <laughs> Wanting in the kitchen. So Brian set a fire with the petrol and he's had to use his fire at things so <laughs> silly boy. Yeah. Meth injected. And the, the last thing my brother built was a quad with a 900 cc Kamazaki engine in it. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. There you go. Dinner is served. Mince and mashed tatties of the fire. And some bread and butter. And a bit country Irish cream we wash it down. That's it just got 11 o'clock at night now. I see I just getting into bed. So you can see I've got my hammock set up underneath the remaining part of that shelter. So you can see the only thing that's left of it is the supports around the edges and the roof itself. <coughs> and I've just strung up my hammock in between some of the supports. So it saves me <coughs> having to set a tarp up tonight. Which will save me some time in the morning packing up as well. So I just went and put a pot of water on the fire, which he had just seen to do what I always do make myself a wee cup of coffee just before bedtime. Usually I've made myself a 
coffee and I've just got a couple of biscuits to dip in it. The rest of the guys are over there in the main camp. So let me spin the camera around and just show you. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking over to. Just looking over into the camp itself, so. Yeah, okay, it's probably a bit warmer over there. Because the heat circulates around inside the inside the camp. But, um, to be honest, it's not that cold tonight, so. I'll be warm enough over here on my own. So yeah, I'm just going to have a, a coffee, a biscuit, and uh, get off to sleep. I'll bring you guys back in the morning. Right, so that's uh, all the guys up, packed their kit away, and uh, I packed away as you've seen as well. Not stopping and having any breakfast this morning, I need to get back down the road, I've got some family plans today. But it's something I touched on yesterday, when we were taking the shelter apart, was the damage done to the trees by the paracord. And I says that the tree raising there could be used as a fire lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the knife and just scrape a wee bit of that away, put it in a bundle and show you how easy it is to light a fire with that. I collected a small amount and it just so happens that that tree sap is there by my own fault tying paracord around the tree too tight uh, I don't ever recommend damaging a tree on purpose to get the tree sap out but in a survival situation if nothing else was available you could damage a tree and wait for the sap to seep out and use that so I've collected it into a small pile here <coughs> and I'm just going to get my ferrocium rod and I'm just going to scrape some of the ferrocium shavings onto the onto the um, sap itself just to give it a little aid and lighting. So now that I've scraped some on, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to light this. And as you can see there, it takes a few attempts, but once it does get going, it burns pretty well, and that'll burn away for a while now. It takes a long time for that sap to burn. It is highly flammable. <laughs> <laughs> 